Open Visual Studio Installer. Click to launch Visual Studio Code. Here select Create a new project. Various project templates are available here. Select Programming Language as C Sharp. Scroll down and choose ASP.NET Core Web API. Click Next. Enter the project name whatever you need. Project location by default disk C and you can change the location of the project. Click Next. Choose the current .NET version of the framework. And other settings leave by default. Click to create the project. Project created and general folder and default files are available here. All dependencies packages are available here. Launch settings. JSON file is used to store the configuration information, which describes how to start the ASP.NET Core application. Web API controller is similar to ASP.NET MVC controller. It handles incoming HTTP requests and send response back to the caller. Web API controller is a class which can be created under the controller's folder or any other folder under your project's root folder. The app settings. JSON file is an application configuration file used to store configuration settings such as database connection strings, any application scope global variables. Program.cs file is the entry point of the application. This will be executed first when the application runs. There is a public static void main method. Whatever code you write inside that method will be executed in that same order. Startup.cs file contains startup class which triggers at first when application launches and even in each HTTP request or response. The default weather forecast class and some variables are given here. Click to execute IIS Express Server. The website is open you can see the Swagger API. By default get method only available for weather forecast controller. Get method values are available and response code 200. Schema available it is a weather forecast model data are given here. Minimize the tab and here you can see the performance of CPU and memory usage. Close the tab it stop the server. Now we connect the database and use for the API. Here you can add connection string details. Enter the server name. Enter the database name. Create the folder for model class. Right click model, add and select class. Rename the class as an employee.cs file. Click on Add. Now let's add properties. Employee table has been 5 columns. We will add 5 properties. We need to install the packages. Select Tools. Choose New Get Package Manager for solution. By default, Swagger package installed. First, we need to install SQL client package. Select system.data.sql client. Latest version available. Click to install. Preview the changes and click OK. Read and accept the license. SQL client package installed. Then we need to install JSON packages. Select Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.MVC.NewtonSoft JSON. Select the version and click to install. Preview the changes and click OK. Read and accept the license. JSON package installed. Here you can see the packages which we are installed. Now we need create the controller for employee table. Add, select controller. 
Select API and Empty Controller. Rename as Employee Controller. Click on Add. Employee Controller created. Importing Namespace Classes. Already coded we are using here because it's time consuming. HTTP POST method, function name add employee, insert query. If employee added successfully, the message has displayed. HTTP GET method by employee ID, function name GET employee, select query. HTTP PUT method by employee ID, function name edit employee, update query. If employee updated successfully, the message has displayed. HTTP delete method by employee ID, function name delete employee, using delete query. If employee deleted successfully, the message has displayed. Using this to save the code, or control S. Click to execute the code. All API methods are available here. Schema model data are given here. First, we check the post API methods. Click to execute post request. The employee added successfully and response code 200. Check whether employee insert in employee table or not. Click here to add a query or select here. Execute the query. Here you can see the result employee details. Add one more record. Check it again. Here you can see the updated employee details. Get method using by employee ID. Put method using by employee ID. Delete method using by employee ID. The employee has been deleted successfully. Check the employee has deleted or not. Here you can see the employee has been deleted. Thank you for watching this video.